Hey guys, welcome back to Homestead Prepping and Survival. The teenagers are out and about. I think that biggest one there with the black tail is going to be a rooster. I'm not sure about the one beside him. She gets picked on a lot like she's a hen. But might be two roosters, I don't know. So you see the old white chicken there. She's missing some feathers from her backside and tail feathers. But um, her comb is laying over a little bit, telling me she's stressed a little. But after her ordeal yesterday, that's not surprising. But uh, the rest of them seem to be doing well. And I've already been in there and filled their feeder up and gathered the eggs. I got five eggs. I didn't expect a white one to produce one today after that stress, but she did. And then, let's see if I can get y'all a view. I don't know. It's hard for me to see and show y'all. So you see they're around that feeder and running. And there's a feeder over on this edge that you can't see through this fence. But I counted them. They're all, all the babies are still there. I had one this morning that was caught in that kennel where I told y'all they would go through the wire on the kennel and get out. And I had one that was caught in the kennel apparently overnight. And there was actually two side by side. And I let the first one out and then the next one was didn't make it. So... I don't know. I guess it's just the way nature works. But, um, so I lost another one last night that drops me down to, let's see, three that haven't made it out of the 24. Two of them was our fault. And that one that going through that kennel, I guess, was its own. Nature's way of saying, it wasn't going to make it. Might as well pick the blueberries while I'm out here. I didn't show y'all, but I got a really nice handful yesterday. Probably 30 or 40. Which is much better. Usually, the birds beat me to them. But for whatever reason, I've gotten some this year. Let me show y'all up here. I'm trying to pick the ones that are the most blue. Even though they're not the biggest always. We haven't had any rain really in about a week. But I'm going to go ahead and pick the ones that are ready to be eaten. Those pancakes I told y'all about were really really good so why not go ahead and pick them and figure out how to make them last a little longer in the house that's my goal anyway doesn't mean I'm going to <laughs> they might not make it that long to worry about saving them I see there's quite a few up inside the middle that I need to get to. So I'm going to try to get those and get off this camera and get busy. I'll put them in my pocket. Maybe I won't drop so many. I don't know what y'all can see. reach in and you get a limb you can't get to the ones you was reaching for but you find others there's definitely some blue in here one limb moves the other limb and then I don't get the one I'm reaching for but anyway Hope y'all's day is going well. 
this is Monday evening I've already uploaded a video for Thursday I had that one post this morning so this might get to be a bonus video I've had quite a few lately those look more red than blue to me so I'm not going to pick them there's a blue one I only seem to miss one I'm surprised the birds haven't got them this year I was actually going to buy some of that silver looks like tape but stuff you're supposed to hang from your fruit trees and fruit shrubs and things and try to scare the birds off so I could get more of them but this year it hadn't been an issue well if it has they produce so many it didn't matter my daughter was talking about planting some my oldest daughter and I said well I planted eight and I got two that survived this between this one and that one was a whole row and these are the only two that survived so I may end up trying to do some cuttings off of these and get some root start or whatever and see if I can't get more bushes out of it and if, if I get them to where they're growing um, plant more out here I also thought about doing that with my apple trees because I've only got four apple trees that made it out of about eight I think so I've got the two pear trees that seem to be doing well so I've been watching a lot of those other videos of other people that are much better gardeners and things that I am and uh, doing the cuttings not as hard as you would think it is so I'm thinking of taking some cutting from the pear trees from the peach trees from the nectarine because I've only I got the two nectarines but that one has just done it it just hasn't grown like this other so take some cuttings and see if I can't get more to root and grow so I can plant more of those bushes. Um, I don't know the rules about doing that, but you see the two fig trees back here, which I'm not going to do that with the fig trees, just simply because fig trees get huge. And I'm going to have to prune this one back here. That's a fig tree. That's right all over the camera. And this is a fig tree. And they were both about the same size and planted at the same time. <laughs> and that one's covered with figs this year. Long ways to go. but <sighs> So that's what I'm thinking of doing. And then when I get through with the chicken pen and the rabbit cages and all, I really would like to get these old raised beds cleaned up. I want to leave the rose bush, of course. But I want to do away with the raised beds and I'll just take that soil and spread it in the garden area. Because a lot of it was compost and good topsoil store-bought stuff. And, you know, might as well. The scuppling vine is thriving inside of all the bushes here. Now, the problem with the scuppling vine, you see it's here, that scuppling, that leaf in the middle. Or muscadine, whichever you want to call it. The problem with it is there is poison ivy mixed in here and I've got to find some my son-in-law showed it to me um, remember leaves of three I'm not seeing it because I'm looking for it <laughs> but there there is some poison ivy in here just a matter of finding it but the scuppling is just grown everywhere and it is loaded again this year with little berries all over it and the privy has gotten in there and made it a disaster and then of course the other weeds have grown so i've got to get all of this cut down and get the scuppling vine back under control i think i'll just instead of putting up that arbor that i had just put a post at each end and run three or four wires between the posts so it can trellis up that post 
but this first 8x16 or 4x16 raised bed, the landscape timbers are about rotted away, so <clears throat> no need trying to save that. Um, and this back one where the scuffling vine originated was a 4x8 with a scuffling vine, and then a 4x8 I had bell peppers and things like that growing in it that did pretty good for me. Um, pe regular jalapeno peppers and bell peppers and all. And then this front bed, I've, I had tomatoes in it one year. This front bed, I've done tomatoes and thornless blackberries in this thing. And uh, they did really well. And, you know, they die off during the winter. They typically come back, but I think the weeds overtook them. So I've got to be careful when I do this and stay off and out of the poison ivy. I prefer not to get that all over me. Still don't see any, and I'm looking for it. <laughs> of course, it'll get me if I touch something, trust me. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Y'all are probably seeing it on camera going, there it is, idiot, there it is, but whatever. I'm not seeing it right this minute. <sighs> Scuffling vine is freaking 10 feet tall. It's way up there, and I just don't see the poison ivy that my son-in-law pointed out to me. I know it's here. But anyway, I want that to be my next goal is to get that cleaned up and maybe if the blackberries are in there if they survived i can get them to grow back and have the thornless blackberries and definitely get the scuffling under control i mean it is grown it's running up that tree right there y'all it is just going ballistic and if i get energetic one day i've actually got wild scufflings in the woods behind the house around the firearm training course and all there's probably at least six or eight scuffling vines running back through the woods in different areas that i've mowed around and all so i could go back there and train them up and have even more but all the trees I planted in the field over there, I watered religiously for two years. And on the third year, well, actually the second year, a lot of them died. But on the third year, 80% of them were already gone. They didn't make it. I had cherries, black cherries. I had a lot of plum trees over there, and plums grow wild down here. So why they wouldn't grow for me, I don't know. But, and I had a couple of apples, I had a couple of pecan, uh, the two mulberry trees. So the only thing that's still alive over there are two apple trees and a mulberry tree. So everything else died off. And I mean, we dug two foot by two foot, you know, two foot around, two foot deep. And filled it with good soil and watered them. First year looked like they were going to make it. The second year, at least early in the spring, I thought most of them were going to make it. And by the end of the second year, going into the third, 80% of them were gone. And like I say, I've only got those three that survived over there. But I thought I'd show y'all another little video. And I know I talked about it in the other one. I know that board's crooked, but guys, the amount of work it would take to pull that down and straighten it out is just not worth it. It's a chicken pen. That's excess wire I run across there. So there's 21 babies still in there, plus the uh, whatever five-week-old one that's being the mother hen in there to them. They seem to be doing pretty well. When I went in a little while ago, I had one that was away from all the others just sitting there. Seems a little lethargic, so it might not make it. I don't know. I picked it up, and it was, you know, moving and chirping. And I put it over by the others, and I'm hoping it will perk up a little bit. Both the waterers are in there, still have good fresh water in them. Both feeders are fine, which they can get to the big feeder. So... 
and I have decided I'm not going to put two or three rabbit cages in that pen. It's too crowded with that one two by four. So I'm going to put one in this pen on the right side of the door there because it won't be in the way. And then I'm going to, when I do this side, I'm going to put one in there. So I'll have three pens, one for the males, one for the females, one for the babies. Um, and I've got to do a little more research because the males will kill the babies. You have to separate them after they mate. I don't know how it works after that. I'm completely new to trying to raise meat chickens. A friend of mine had rabbit, I mean meat rabbits, I'm sorry. Um, a friend of mine had rabbits. He let them breed and he left the males and females together and all the babies were killed by the male. And he said, I don't know if you're supposed to leave the mother with them or not. But you definitely don't need the, the, the daddy in there. So I got to do a little more research on that. But I'm a long way from it. These telephone poles, these longer ones here are almost 30 feet. And I just can't grab it by hand and move it. Way down there. Plus, those water containers are full. So, I've got to move the water containers, which means I've got to drain them. And that's 550 gallons of water. Because with the backhoe broke and the tractor broke, neither I have nothing that's going to pick them up. Um, my brother's big 35 horse or 50 horse, whatever it is, tractor's got hay bale hook uh, tines on the front. He can He could pick them up, but... I'm not going to do that. I'll just drain them. Um, get them drained. Get them moved. And then fill them back up where I'm going to move them to. So they'll be out of the way. And I hopefully won't have to move them again until I'm ready to put them in the tower. But I got to get them off the poles. So I can move the poles. And be able to do the chicken pen. And I don't want to move the poles into where i'm going to be building it because i have to move them again in order to build it so y'all know the struggle don't you <laughs> i'm thinking about just rolling them straight back toward the old dog pen and the old fish cleaning table counter out there and uh leave them laying there just roll them straight back so they'll be out of the way i don't know but either way i've got some chores to do it's pretty freaking hot. Um, heat index today is around 100, so we got a little bit of a break from what we've been doing, but it's going to be climbing the rest of the week. And normally, if I think it's going to rain, I don't let the chickens out because I have to come out in the rain and put them up, so I just leave them in the pen. But I'm really, really wanting a much bigger run for them. They love coming out to this. But I think this post I'm leaning on right here is the only one that's about four and a half foot tall. With the pin there, I could come straight off with a second row of wire and all the way down and around and make this wire high enough they couldn't fly out. But um, I want to make it larger, so I don't want to do that until I make the pin larger at least. And I'll probably put another post in and add a door, an actual gate, so that I don't have to do that. And that way I could make the fence higher. Because that's where they fly out on that side. That's the lowest point. So I don't know. As with most people, I've got many, many projects that need doing. Very little time, very little energy once I finish a 10-hour, 11-hour day at work. But... The best thing about summertime, thank God, is it doesn't get dark here till almost 9 o'clock. If there's no clouds in the sky, it's a few minutes after 9 before it gets dark. See, I was talking about y'all catching wild rabbits and putting in the cages. Look, can y'all see that one? You see him moving? God, it's hard to hold the camera still when I've zoomed in all the way. But I've got two or three that just hang out here in the yard. Or 
around their property and they're not hurting anything so like i said it's easier to store rabbits for food <laughs> letting them run wild in the yard like that then all right guys um you hear me talk about it in another video that uh, i've had some phone issues and camera issues and I deleted some video because the phone was saying it was full and it was recording into the memory of the phone instead of the memory card anyway I got it all straightened out as you can tell by the part right before this the the camera shut off so I, I did another ending for it and it caused all kinds of problems anyway so I'm gonna wrap this one up it's gonna be a uh, bonus video i'm gonna upload this tomorrow morning which is wednesday morning at work you've got one coming thursday morning um that i uploaded several days ago and so this one will be an, a bonus video for you and i've already done one that i'm going to upload for either saturday or sunday or monday you know um i'm trying to upload from work so it doesn't take me two to four hours to upload a video it's amazing to me how when I first started using the laptop to to put my videos on and upload it, the first video was like a 40 minute video and it uploaded in about five or six minutes. I don't know, it was really quick. And then of course the phone did an update and boom, there went that speed. So, you know, it's intentional, intentional um, rising and all that. They slow you down. Okay, you're, he's going too fast, he's doing too much. So, anywho, guys i do appreciate it if you haven't already done so please hit that like button and uh share the channel when you can please subscribe to the channel it helps me grow the channel so much and we've got a long long ways to go the more people we can help prep and learn why we prep and and how to prep the more people we can help when crap hits the fan because you all see it just like everybody else does the ones watching this channel are, their eyes are open your eyes are open and it's it, you're not asleep like those people that voted for Biden so um, or in the grave <laughs> you know <laughs> a friend of mine said dead folks don't count but they sure did the last election didn't they <laughs> anyway guys I do appreciate you remember what I always tell you Jesus loves you and so do I y'all be safe be prepared thanks for watching my videos